Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another high-end Chromebook. This is the Dragonfly Pro from HP. And the best way to describe this is kind of as a spiritual successor to the Pixel Book that was released a number of years ago. It has a lot of premium features on board, and I think it's a very nice Chromebook. And we're going to take a closer look at this in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $1,000, $999 to be exact. And I can already see the comments flowing into my comment stream about the cost of this Chromebook. Why should a $1,000 Chromebook exist? I often hear from you. But I do think there's a market for these higher end Chromebooks now. I would not have said there was a market five or six years ago, but things are changing quite a bit, not only with the Chrome operating system itself and all the things that you can do with it, but also because of what's going on inside of institutions that are largely Chrome shops, namely schools. So case in point, my local school has uh, K-12 Chromebooks issued to just about every kid. And those are cheap devices, the ones you usually associate with Chrome OS. And the teachers and the administrators are all walking around with Macs and higher-end Windows machines, yet they're spending most of their time, if not all of it, depending on the person, inside of Google Apps using the things that just normally only run on a Chromebook. And I think for those users, a higher-end machine makes a lot of sense because it's easier to support and it has the horsepower to deliver the things that those administrators and teachers are looking for. So I don't think HP would make something like this if there wasn't interested customers out there for it. And in addition to hearing everybody complaining about the cost of these high-end Chromebooks, I've also heard from people very interested in me reviewing this one. So that is why we're taking a look at it today. And I think it's, again, one of the nicest Chromebooks I have seen in a while. Now, under the hood, this has an i5-1235U processor. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. Unfortunately, there are no user upgradable parts in this. So what you buy is what you get for life. And I really would have liked to have seen expandable storage on this, especially given all the things Chrome OS can do these days. 256 gigabytes on a high-end laptop just isn't enough, in my opinion, even with the cloud kind of backing you up there on the Chrome operating system. And this has a 14-inch display running at a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It is LCD at 2560 by 1600 for its resolution. It's a nice looking display, which also has touch capabilities as well. So you can, of course, navigate with your fingers using the Chrome interface, but it's also helpful with some of the Android apps that you'll find on the platform. And this display is super bright. So you can see it's pretty bright here on the table. This is only about a halfway point here. It goes up to about 1,200 nits. It is so bright, I have generally been keeping it at the halfway mark as I've been reviewing this inside. But the uh, display here can look really good outside because of the power of that backlight. That will, of course, though, impact battery life when you are making the display that bright. So generally, I'm keeping it around here. Uh, not only for comfort, but also to try to extend out the battery. And I found the battery lasts about 8 to 10 hours, depending on what you're doing with it. You'll get closer to the 10-hour mark if you stick to the basics like email and web browsing, and of course, keeping that display brightness down. But if you're doing more intensive things like games or hardcore coding or whatever, that's going to eat into the battery life a little bit more. It does, though, charge up pretty quick. It is very nicely constructed here. It's a mix of magnesium and aluminum. And as you can see here, everything is very well balanced. It's got a good feel to it. A little on the heavier side of things for a 14 inch coming in at 3.33 pounds or 1.5 kilograms. It does though have an interesting port selection. This is the second Chromebook I've looked at this month that has Thunderbolt ports. And this one has four of them. You've got two on this side and another two on the other side. These are, of course, compatible with USB Type-C devices as well, along with regular USB devices with a dongle. But these are the only ports you get. There's no headphone jack. There is nothing else here, no card reader. 
uh, just the Thunderbolt ports, so you will need to carry around some adapters if you are intending to bring other things to the mix. And because these are Thunderbolt rated ports, they are full service, which means you can get power in, video out, and of course those data devices as well. And that's true of all four ports on this device. There is a fingerprint reader here on the top of the keyboard. I found the keyboard to be very nice to work with here, nice large keys that are well spaced. And this of course uses the Google layout for everything. The keyboard is backlit. In fact, you've got a multicolor backlight here, very similar to that Lenovo gaming Chromebook we looked at recently. You can't assign colors to individual keys, but you can get the rainbow going there or have the entire keyboard be a single static color. The trackpad is equally nice here. This is a haptic trackpad, so you can click anywhere on it. It doesn't actually move, but it's going to give you a little click like the Macs do to make you feel like you push down on it. The one thing that I did adjust in the settings was making that click feel a little firmer, so I got a little bit more of a bump when I uh, push against it, but overall it feels uh, very nice here and a very premium feel for both the keyboard and trackpad. The speakers really impressed me on this one. They are upward firing. It's got a ton of bass, a good amount of uh, range of sound on it. Very, very loud. In fact, when you've got it cranked up, you can feel the whole case just kind of vibrating. So it's a very nice speaker system that's great for TV shows and music and movies and everything else. And of course, video conferencing. There is a nice webcam here at the top. It will shoot 1080p video. I was impressed with it too because I shot it in my kitchen here where I had a lot of backlight coming in from the windows there. And as you can see, it picked me up just fine and has a very nice quality image. So if you're doing your Google Meets and everything, uh, this will work out quite well for that. And just to underscore how much HP is invested in this platform, they have set up a 24-7 support line just for this machine. You can get access to those support representatives through their support app that you'll find inside of your start menu here with a little question mark. And they also have an extended warranty program that kind of works like Apple Care. It's 11 bucks a month. And if you have any kind of accidental damage to the machine, like a spill or a drop, they will fix that as part of that subscription plan for free. There's one incident a year, and you can have that coverage for up to 36 months. So let's take a look now and see how this thing performs. We'll begin with some basic web browsing to the nasa.gov homepage here. And as you can see, our touchscreen is working as expected here, and everything is springing up very quickly as we would expect as well. This does have a Wi-Fi 6E radio on board, and I'm connected to a Wi-Fi 6 network right now. So you can see how fast everything is rendering in. And of course, this is what I would expect out of a modern Intel-based computer, whether it's a Chromebook or a PC. And a little bit earlier, we pulled up a 4K 60 frames per second video on my YouTube channel. We did get a couple of drop frames when the page first rendered in, but after that, it was smooth sailing with no further drop frames. It was able to keep up with every frame of this video without issue. So I don't think you'll have any problems watching content from any of the popular streaming services. This does not support HDR at the moment, so you're not going to see any advantages in that over a PC with an equally bright display. But things do look nice on this display, and of course the processor is able to keep up with the demands of high-end video. One thing though that I recommend very strongly though for the best image quality is that if you are going to Netflix or Prime Video or Disney Plus or whatever, use the web browser to watch those videos as opposed to downloading their apps through the Google Play Store, which you'll also find on your Chromebook here. And the reason is, is that the copyright protection or DRM is not supporting the higher resolutions through the Android side of the system. So the web browser for Netflix and Disney Plus and everything else is what I would suggest you use for the best image quality. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 271, and that puts this machine right in line with its peers in the marketplace. So it seems as though for most basic tasks, this is going to do just as well as PCs and Macs at around the same price point.
Now, as I mentioned, this also runs Android apps, including games, and because you have the touch screen here, you can actually play these games the way it was intended without having to uh, futz around with the trackpad or whatever. I found most of the Android games work well here. Uh, you will find, though, some compatibility issues given that this machine has an Intel processor versus the ARM chips that most phones have. So some of the higher-end Android games like Call of Duty Mobile don't run reliably or at all on here, but a lot of the uh, more casual stuff here like Crossy Road certainly works. But there's more to gaming now on these Chromebooks because this is one of the Chromebooks that supports installing Steam games, the same games you'd run on a Windows PC. Let's have a look at that. So this is Red Dead Redemption 2, and we're getting about 25 frames per second here, uh, running the game at 720p at the lowest settings. I think you might see a little bit more performance on a Windows machine with this processor, but it's playable for the most part here, and I can use my game controller as well. The game is the PC version, and this is using the same compatibility layer that the Steam Deck uses. So all the development that Valve put into the Steam Deck is also going to benefit other Linux-based devices like Chromebooks. Let's take a look at another game. All right, next up is No Man's Sky, and this one we're running at 1680 by 1050 to maintain the aspect ratio. And we're getting about 30 frames per second, just shy of that here. So again, I see better performance typically on Windows machines with similar hardware. But I think if we turned it down a little further, maybe to a 720p equivalent resolution, we would do a little better. But still, quite playable here. And as you can see, everything looks great, and my game controller is also functional with it as well. So altogether here, this is a very interesting development for the Chrome OS operating system because this Linux version of Steam is running in a container and so it's completely isolated from the rest of the system. But this is also where having more storage I think would be very helpful because these games are quite large, as large as they are in the PC version because they are the same game essentially. And I think it's going to be an area that we're going to see a lot of development in over the next year as the Steam installation here moves out of beta. Uh, but so far, so good here, although this did run a little better on the uh, Framework Chromebook that we reviewed a few weeks ago. Now, it's funny, the only time I heard the system fan was when I was playing those games on this machine. There are fan intakes on the left and right hand side here, and it will exhaust through the back underneath the display. It is very quiet as far as fans go, and again, you're not going to hear it kick on all that often, so not too noisy even if you are putting it under load. And speaking of Linux, you also have the ability to run Linux applications on here, including command line applications, but also applications that make use of a graphical user interface. So for example, I downloaded the free Libre Office Suite a little while ago, this is running locally on the computer, so if I was not on the internet, I could do a spreadsheet here or put together some word processing documents and save everything locally on the Chromebook. And of course, a lot of other free and open source software is installable on here and will run just fine. And this is one of the things that I love about Chrome OS is that it's a nice entry point to learning about Linux. And once you kind of get a feel for it here, you might be able to install it on a PC and get Ubuntu or some other distribution going and have at it. And what's nice about this for developers is that you've got a decent environment to work in. It's isolated from the rest of the Chromebook and a really nice way, again, to learn Linux without breaking the machine in the process. Now, every Chromebook has an end of support date where it no longer gets updates from Google. This one's date is June of 2030, about seven years from the time that I'm shooting this video. But if you were to happen to buy this second hand in 2028, you only have about two years before Google stops supporting it. Although there is now a version of Chrome OS called Chrome OS Flex that is designed to be run on older computers. And I would imagine at that point you could probably shoehorn it onto the hardware here and keep it going. It'll still work after 2030, but it just won't get any further updates unless you get Flex on it instead. But all in from a Chromebook perspective, this is a really nice high-end Chromebook. They've packed a lot of features into this. I think if this was a Windows-based machine, this would have a lot of value packed in, given you've got the four Thunderbolt ports, a really nice bright display, 
and decent performance. Now, I would have liked to have seen some more expandability on the storage side here because we are seeing Chrome OS branching off in a whole bunch of different directions. Over the last couple of years, they've added Android and Linux and now Steam. And I think all of those things do require storage just like they do on other platforms. But beyond that, I think it's a really nice Chromebook. It's up to you to decide if a $1,000 Chromebook is good for you. But I think for those who are in need of something a little more powerful that runs Chrome OS, this would be an excellent choice. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.